While our use of AI is becoming more prevalent in everyday life, in a lot of use cases, it doesn't necessarily make an awful lot of sense. However, in some instances, it really does make life considerably easier. And in this video, I want to go over one such instance, and that is what you can do now inside Jet Engine from Crockerblock and how we can use the AI website builder to speed up our overall process of creating dynamic websites. So let's take a look at how all of this works. So getting started with the website builder and using the AI is incredibly simple. Make sure you've got Jet Engine installed, the latest version. And from there, we're going to come into the Jet Engine section and down to the new website builder inside there. Now inside here, we've got two things we can do. We can tell it what type of website we want to build. And secondly, we can describe the functionality we want. Now, it's worth bearing in mind at this point in time, this is not something that's going to technically actually build you a website, as in the design of it and all the pages. What this is going to do is it's going to help you by designing the database structure that goes behind the scenes and some other things that you can then start to leverage inside designs without having to go through the boring process of setting all this up for yourself. So let's go and describe what type of website we want. We're going to use a simple example here. We're going to use a job listing website. There's a couple of things we're obviously going to need with that. We're going to need jobs, strangely enough. We're also going to need the actual companies, and we need to connect the company that's actually listing the job alongside the actual job or vacancy itself. So we're going to need some kind of relationship. On top of that, we're probably going to want to have some kind of filtering options. So with that in mind, I've installed Jet Smart Filter, so I've got that as part of my overall setup, and that will be used inside the AI whole process. So let's give it a brief description about what the website actually is. So they're very brief overview of what I want the site to be about. Next, we need to go and describe the actual functionality that we want. Now, the more detail you can give it here, the better. And obviously, with anything AI, the more information and instruction you can give it, the better chance you're going to get of what you want being actually created by AI. So let's put in some basics. Obviously, you spend a lot more time doing this than I will in this example. But once you understand the process, you can go to town on it. So we've been quite sort of easy going in the description of what we want. So directory listing using companies as a custom post type. We want job listings, custom post type connected to the actual business custom post type. And we want easy filtering options to allow the website visitor to find the exact role they're interested in. So we're going to hit preview website model. And what that's going to do is that's going to give us a preview of what the AI suggests to create based upon what we've told we wanted to do. So after a moment or two, you can see this is what it comes back with. We've got three different sections here. We've got the custom post types, one for job listing, one for co companies. We've got the filters over on the right hand side. These are the different filters that could be used to filter the information. And we've got a relationship which tells us is companies connected to job listings and a one to many relationship. Now with all of these things, we can easily delete things edit things, we can regenerate this if we're not happy, we can come back up, we can make changes and then regenerate again. It's worth bearing in mind that you are using AI credits as part of this. And in my pl particular plan, I've got 60 monthly credits. So each time you run this, it uses a single credit. So if you are more detailed in exactly what you want, there's a better chance you're going to get what you're actually asking for without too much sort of re going back and, and refactoring what you're asking for. Now, inside here, you can see things are broken down. It's telling us how it's going to organize these custom post types, relationships, and filters, and so on. So we've got basic WordPress features like the title, editor, and thumbnail, you'd expect. You've then got the job type, which is going to be a custom taxonomy, and we've got a job location, which again is going to be a taxonomy. A couple of meta fields then for a salary range, which in this example is going to be a text field, and an application deadline, which is going to be a date field. And finally, the related entities, which is the company, which is using the relationship we have listed in the middle. And then on the flip side, we've got the companies. And again, you can see this tells us what it's going to put in there from taxonomies to standard WordPress fields and so on. If you want to edit any of these, you can simply come in, click the little pencil icon, edit what you have inside there. Once you're happy, click the little check mark. Or if you actually don't want one of these, you can hit the little trash can icon to get rid of it. The same can be done then for any of these actual custom post types, relationships, or filters. But let's say we're happy with what it's suggesting here. 
All we need to do then is check this and say create this actual model. And what this is going to do is it's not just going to create the sort of structure here with the relationships, taxonomies, metafields, and so on. It's going to do some more things. So stick with me and I'll show you some of the things it's actually going to do on top of this. And this goes beyond what I covered in the video I released probably six months ago, which was a, a beta release of this. There's been quite a few useful enhancements on what I covered there. So let's create this website model. You can see that's now going to give us an overview of what it's done. Everything is listed here. You can see that it tells us what you may need next. And we've got some options there, which we can go through all this if we want to. And again, we've got options to edit and jump into all these different things, edit the terms and so on. If we take a look at the left hand side, now we've got companies. And inside there, we've got a couple of different subsections, taxonomies. We've got job listing. And again, we've got some taxonomies inside here. Let's jump into the job type, for example. And you see there's already some job types listed inside you, which is nice. Again, one more thing we don't have to do. If we want to edit, delete, update, add whatever we want, we can do that with a good starting point. Job locations, as you can see, this has put some locations inside you. It's obviously using a US-based kind of preference, which again, we could delete all this and add in what we want that's more relevant to our actual website. Now, if you're finding this video useful, why not pop down below and hit that thumbs up button to tell YouTube that you like this kind of content. And while you're down there, why not hit that subscribe button and ping the bell to be notified when new content is added. But if you're not enjoying it, well, feel free to hit that thumbs down button twice, as that seems to work pretty well too. Anyway, let's get back on with today's tutorial. Then you've got your ad post and your job listings. Come into your companies, for example, jump into industry. You can see there's some industry options and again, full control and add your post and your company. So let's add a company in first of all. Let's add a post and let's give us a company name. We'll say Google, a description, location, founded date, not really relevant in this example. So we could probably delete that field and we could have done that right back at the beginning. But let's just go with this and say, it's only just been formed. Number of employees, we'll say a thousand. And then you've got your children job listing. So if we click on this, you can see there's nothing available because we don't currently have any jobs. So this is basically a two-way or bi-directional relationship where we're inside the actual job vacancy itself. We can connect it up to the company. And when we're inside the company, we can connect it up to the job vacancy. So whichever one you're in, it's very easy to connect things up. So we say we're happy with all of this. Again, to come into companies, you can set a featured image, choose our industry, technology. I haven't got an image here, so I'm gonna worry about that. Hit publish. We've now created our first company. So now if we come back out of this, you can see there's Google and the basic info there. And again, being Jet Engine, you can customize and display additional fields inside you. So you have full control to go back and edit those kinds of things. That's pretty cool. Then if we come into our job listings, let's say we want to add a new post, which we probably want to edit and say add job. But let's just say we have a widget wrangler role and we'll just put a description over the job listing. Our job location, let's just say this one is in LA, nice and sunny probably. And we'll say this is a full-time role. And underneath you can see a salary range. So let's just say this is a very well-paid job. Application deadline we'll say is by the end of next month. And then you see there's our company. So this is our relationship. So now let's connect companies. And now you can see we now get a option to drop down and choose our company. There's Google choose it, connect our companies. There we go. We've now connected the vacancy to the company. Let's publish this, jump back out. You see there's our widget wrangler. Now if we come into our companies and we go into the company itself and Google, we'll edit this, scroll down and you can see there's our job listing. We've got widget wrangler, which is not the easiest thing to say, but you can see we can disconnect it, we can view it, and we can edit it from inside you. So it's a nice, clean, simple way of connecting those two things together. And it's pretty simple and rapid. So those are the key things that I wanted to show you how easy it is to set up, but there is still more being done behind the scenes. Let's come back into Jet Engine and let's come into our listings and components. And inside here, you can see we've got two listings, a base listing for the jobs and for companies. So if we come in and edit these, so let's say we'll edit with bricks because I'm currently using bricks, but you could edit listing settings if you wanted to change anything you want inside here. You can see it's already basically set the queries and everything. So let's cancel out of that. Let's come into bricks. And inside here, you can see we now have a section and we've got all the data connections set up for a dynamic image for the featured image, which we didn't set inside here. Dynamic fields, and you can see if we click on any of these, 
I'm going to open the information up. We can find out what it's data it's getting. So you can see the name, the salary, the closing date. And if you want to read more, I'm going to take a look at the details page. Conversely, if we come back out of this and open the listings page, you can see inside here we've got basically the same kind of thing, but this time it's for the company itself. So we take a quick look at the custom post types. You can see we've got our two CPTs, our companies and job listings, open those up and everything is configured inside you. Again, like I say, if you want to remove anything, change anything, add more information in, you can absolutely do that. Add admin columns in, for example, the application deadline and so on. Again, you can customize all of this. Take a look at your companies. Again, the same kind of option. So I say, for example, the founder date is irrelevant. Let's get rid of it. Don't need it. Gone. Update our post type. Oh, we've updated that data. So nothing is permanent. Everything could be edited and adjusted if you didn't do it when you created everything using the AI sort of website builder. You can still come in and make changes to everything that you need. Same things go for our taxonomies. All our taxonomies are set up inside you. So we have everything in place, including those listings. Now, hopefully what this shows you is how you can use this website builder, leverage AI in a logical way to be able to speed up the whole process of what is basically a pretty time consuming and often quite boring setup of creating your custom post types, taxonomies, relationships, filters, all those kinds of good things. So everything that you need is in place, including, like I say, all those filters. So if you jump into JetSmart filters, there's all the filters in place. Job type, location, salary, application deadline, industry, everything you need is there, ready to go. So we can hit the ground running by creating those filters as well. Now all we need to do is pull that data into our design, create a couple of templates inside Bricks, Elementor, whatever you're using, and then you basically have your website in its basic format up and running. And then you can customize, expand, do whatever you want from that point on. For me, I think this is a very useful and a very intuitive way of building things out using Jet Engine and actually leveraging AI in an intelligent fashion to speed up and make our lives just a little bit easier. But as always, I welcome your thoughts. Are you a Jet Engine user or are you using something like ACF, Metabox, Pods, or something else? And would this maybe have you considered taking a look at Jet Engine for yourself? Let me have a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.